The Indian Air Force was reported to have urged the Defense Research and Development Organization to speed up the development and trials of the Rudram II and Rudram III air-to-surface standoff missiles. Trials of the Rudram II, with a 300 to 350 kilometers range, began in 2024 on Su-30 MKI fighters, while Rudram III, offering a 500 to 550 kilometers range and ramjet propulsion for near hypersonic speeds, is expected to start trials in late 2025. Both systems are designed to neutralize enemy radars, air defenses, and critical infrastructure, with integration planned on Su-30 MKI, Tejas MK-1A, and Jaguar Darren III aircraft. The urgency reflects growing regional threats, including China's S-400 and HQ-9 systems, along the LAC and Pakistan's Chinese-made SAMs, making the Rudram series vital for future suppression of enemy air defenses and deep strike missions. PTC Industries and Kiniko Aerospace and Defense signed a strategic MOU in New Delhi to jointly develop next-generation aerospace components. The partnership brings together PTC's expertise in titanium and superalloy metallics with Kiniko's strength in advanced composite structures, aiming to deliver integrated solutions for civil, defense, and space sectors. The collaboration will support key Indian programs such as AMCA, Tejas MK2, and Prachand LCH, while also catering to global OEMs like Boeing, Airbus, and Lockheed Martin. By focusing on lightweight, durable, and high performance assemblies, the initiative aligns with Atmanirbhar Bharat, reduces import dependence, and enhances India's role in the $700 billion global aerospace supply chain, with applications ranging from aircraft engines to ISRO launch vehicles. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is considering India's newly unveiled Mark 45, 155 mm 45 caliber mounted gun system to strengthen its artillery under budget constraints. Earlier, the armed forces ordered only 24 Israeli Atmos 155 mm 52 caliber systems due to high costs. Introduced at IDEX 2025 in Abu Dhabi, the Marg 45 is nearly 40% cheaper, mounted on a lighter 4x4 chassis, and offers high mobility for the Philippines island terrain. General Romeo Bronner Jr. recently stressed India's affordability and quality, citing past acquisitions like Brahmos missiles. The Mark 45's rapid deployment, shoot and scoot ability, and NATO ammunition compatibility make it a practical option, with the armed forces of the Philippines likely to expand its arsenal through this system, further deepening India Philippines defense ties. The Indian Navy's quest for a submarine launch cruise missile capability, SLCM, has intensified, with both European and Russian manufacturers competing to meet immediate requirements. Recently, MBDA offered its combat-proven naval cruise missile, NCM, compatible with Calvary-class submarines and future P-75I designs. Russia, in parallel, proposed its long-range caliber missiles as part of a larger package including refurbished Kilo-class submarines and upgrades to India's fleet. Meanwhile, DRDO is developing an indigenous SLCM based on the NERB-HEY program, tested successfully in 2023 and 2024, but unlikely to be inducted before 2030. With foreign systems already proven in combat and DRDO's project facing delays, the Navy is weighing interim imports to bridge the capability gap until indigenous options mature. In August 2025, former Philippine Foreign Minister and current UK Ambassador Teodoro Loxon Jr. publicly praised India for joining a joint naval patrol with the Philippines inside its exclusive economic zone. His remarks followed a tense incident near Scarborough Shoal, where a Chinese PLA Navy ship collided with a Chinese Coast Guard vessel while harassing a Philippine Coast Guard mission. The patrol involved Indian Navy ships INS Delhi, INS Kiltan, and INS Shakti alongside Philippine vessels BRP Jose Rizal and BRP Miguel Malvar, 
conducting advanced combat drills. Loxon criticized Western allies, especially the U.S. for their caution, contrasting it with India's bold engagement. His comments highlighted Manila's frustration with China's growing aggression and underscored India's emerging role as a strategic partner. The Indian government was reported to be preparing a landmark policy to allow private companies to mine, import, and process uranium, ending decades of state monopoly in the nuclear sector. The move is tied to Prime Minister Modi's target of expanding nuclear power capacity 12-fold by 2047, ensuring it contributes around 5% of India's electricity needs. Officials suggested the policy may be unveiled within the current fiscal year alongside permissions for private players to supply critical equipment for nuclear plants. While India holds about 76,000 tons of uranium, this is expected to meet only a fraction of future demand, requiring major imports. The plan would necessitate amendments to multiple mining, electricity, and investment laws before private participation can begin. Recently, a Nigerian defense delegation, led by Minister of State for Defense Dr. Bello Mohamed Matawal, visited Bharat Electronics Limited in Ghaziabad to explore advanced Indian systems for Nigeria's security needs. The team was introduced to cutting-edge technologies, including the DRDO-developed D4 anti-drone system and the Akishtir air defense system, alongside Bell's radars, electronic warfare, and AI-based solutions. Dr. Matawal showed strong interest in systems supporting Nigeria's Mtrakon Air Defense Initiative. This visit builds on earlier engagements, including a March 2024 Indian delegation to Abuja and Nigeria's expressed interest in a potential $1 billion deal for Tejas jets, drones, and vehicles. Both nations highlighted opportunities for technology transfer, joint development, and long-term strategic defense cooperation. India's Tejas Mk-2, a 4.5-generation fighter jet, has moved into the prototyping stage after completing its design phase under the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, and HAL. Structural assembly of the first prototype is expected by March 2026, with a possible rollout in April or later the same year. Flight testing is planned for late 2026 or early 2027, slightly delayed from the earlier 2026 target, due to integration complexities and quality checks. The program includes four prototypes approved by the Cabinet Committee on Security to validate design, avionics, and performance. Powered by the GE F414 engine, the MK2 features a larger airframe, higher payload capacity, ASA radar, indigenous IRSD, and compatibility with advanced weapons like Astra MK2 and Brahmos NG. With 70% indigenous content, enhanced aerodynamics and survivability features, the aircraft aims to meet IF's multi-role needs while competing with platforms like Rafale and Gripen E against regional threats. <laughs> India's fifth-generation advanced medium combat aircraft, AMCA, has received a major design update, with its infrared search and track system, Reposition to the aircraft centerline. The new placement exposes only the electro-optical sensor head, eliminating the earlier fairing and improving stealth, aerodynamics, and sensor efficiency. Developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, in partnership with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the AMCA is intended as a stealthy, multi-role fighter for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground operations. The redesign enhances the aircraft's low observable profile boosts infrared detection capability, and allows seamless integration with advanced avionics like the UTAM ASA radar and distributed aperture system. The program, approved for five prototypes by the Cabinet Committee on Security, is in its detailed design phase, with the first flight targeted for 2027 to 28 and mass production expected between 2032 and 2035. Over 70% of its systems will be indigenously developed with support from firms such as BL and Tata Advanced Systems.
the Indian Air Force is preparing to submit a proposal within the next two months for the procurement of 114 multi-role fighter aircraft to the Defense Acquisition Council for acceptance of necessity. This move comes as the IF struggles with a reduced squadron strength of 31 against a sanctioned 42, making the acquisition vital for sustaining air superiority. Once the acceptance of necessity is approved, the process will advance to issuing a request for proposal to global aerospace firms. The program, estimated at $15 to $20 billion, will be executed under the Make in India initiative, ensuring local production and technology transfer. Major contenders include Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Dassault Aviation, Saab, Eurofighter, and Russian Aircraft Corporation, with Rafaeli seen as a strong candidate. Contract finalization is expected by 2028, with deliveries starting three to four years later, significantly boosting India's combat readiness against regional threats. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.